Hey everybody, it's Mike over to Taxes and Bricks. Well, welcome to episode 30, and it's Friday, so it's time for dun -dun -dun, Mailbag. Uh, first, before we get into Mailbag, a um, couple of announcements. Starting next week, uh, because of the tax season and the fact that just a little bit less time uh, to do funsy stuff like videos and um, snapping together Lego. Um, and the fact that I need to devote a little bit more time to tax return prep, duh. Um, I'm going to be cutting back the frequency of the videos, so probably not so much five videos a week, um, more like three, probably go Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, maybe there might be a couple weeks coming up where I might end up with just sort of two. Um, but we're still going to mix in taxes, still going to mix in Lego. Uh, also, Monday's episode, you absolutely don't want to miss this. This is going to be all about withholding, okay? Uh, W-4 forms, state withholding, where you should withhold, and also um, all of the absolute horror show mistakes that I see, which you, if you watch, will never make. So, um, and then last uh, announcement here, uh, this is a mailbag, so names and sort of details and facts have been changed, obviously, in these questions to protect the innocent. Gonna take a quick break here. We're gonna throw up a little disclaimer to pay the lawyers and we'll be right back. This video is rated TAX and contains occasional ramblings, mild attempts at humor, self-deprecation, irreverence, brief numerical examples, and adult tax and accounting advice that may not be suitable for all taxpayers. Viewer discretion is advised, before following any of the advice in this or any of our videos, you should always consult with a tax professional. Thank you. All right, welcome back. So first question comes from uh, Steve. <clears throat> uh, Steve writes, Mike, uh, during 20 and 21, my office closed due to COVID and I was required to work from home. I just found out that the office is no longer requiring us to report to work in person ever again. I guess, congrats, you'll be saving on gasoline there, Steve. So I'll be working from home from now on, exclusively from my house, and I have no office to report to. I have spent a lot of money setting up a permanent home office in my home because uh, between renovations and some other improvements and equipment that I bought, like a desk and a computer, um, and my company has notified me they will not be reimbursing me. Uh, they also will not be paying me for usage of my internet and phone and utilities. Can I claim any of this on my taxes for 2021 and beyond? I was thinking some of my mortgage and real estate taxes and other day-to-day -day expenses could be deducted as well. Well, a little fact here. I know Steve. Steve is not a self-employed individual. He is a W-2 employee, nine to five or whatever, taxes withheld. He's an employee. Um, yeah, sorry, Steve. Nope. The answer is nope. 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 No, no. No, no, no. Home office for W-2 employee. And pretty much any expenses that a W-2 employee incurs. Uh, paper clips. Uh, meals and entertainment. Well, entertainment's not deductible anyway. But meals. Uh, business trips. If your company's not reimbursing you and you're out of pocket, you're also out of luck on your taxes. And that took place as a result of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, which was passed at the end of 2017 and took effect for 2018. It nullified, it negated, it removed, it got rid of all unreimbursed employee-related expenses for W-2 employees. Now, if Steve were self-employed, totally different story. If Steve were a small business owner, totally different story. But Steve's not. W-2 employee, which is most people out there. And yeah, I mean, most people are working from home or at least were for part of 2020 and most, if not all of 2021 and maybe into 2022 and maybe like Steve forever. So sorry, Steve, you're out of luck. All right. Uh, next question comes from um, Jane. Hey, Jane. Uh, Jane says, Mike, I'm gathering our daycare related expenses for you for 2021. I was wondering if I can include piano lessons in my son's tutor. As part of the deduction for child care, the piano lessons take place inside our home, uh, but we take my son to a learning center for his tutoring. Um, 
So in general, Jane, the answer is no. Okay. Um, the entire point of the child care or what they call the dependent care credit or what is known sort of commonly as the daycare credit is so that you can work. Um, and it's not educational in nature. Although, I mean, I guess kids can learn things at daycare or summer camp or something like that. The purpose, if you think about it, would be for you to essentially drop your child off at this particular activity. They remain there for an extended period of time so that you can go to your job. If you have a tutor coming in or you go take your kid to a tutor at like 6 o'clock at night or 5 o'clock at night or after school and you hang around in the parking lot, that's not daycare. That's not dependent care. Uh, same thing, you bring a piano teacher into your house and they sit there at your Steinway in your, you know, Wumpus room or whatever it is you call it where you keep your piano. I don't have a piano. I don't even know what a Rumpus room is. I just heard that on TV once. But you have a piano in your house and you bring a tutor in for an hour and you're in the kitchen sipping Chardonnay. No, that doesn't count. Um, so no, things like that don't count. But like a summer camp, when you drop your kid off in the morning like a daycare center, um, and then you go off to work and the kid does thing all day so that you and your spouse can work. Um, or, you know, aftercare, like right after school, your kid just goes to like an aftercare program or something like that. Um, you know, that works too. Uh, something to be um, bear in mind, when you have a married couple, and I see this a lot, both spouses need to have earned income on the returns in order for child care to be allowable. So if you have a stay-at-home parent and you have, and who isn't earning a W-2 or isn't having their own small business, and then you have the other parent goes to work every day, W-2, or has a small business, so only one person has uh, earned income, and you also have daycare expenses, sure, they may be absolutely necessary so that the stay-at-home parent can actually, you know, I don't know, do stuff without having a kid in tow, um, but you wouldn't really be allowed a credit or a deduction for daycare. Uh, also, bear in mind, too, something that just kind of comes to mind This really is sort of related to child care. Coming up next fall is what's known as open season at most employers, the federal government here, most state governments. If so if you work for somebody, talk to your employer about dependent care benefit accounts. Those are like FSAs, flexible spending accounts, where you can dump some money in throughout the course of the year and then utilize that money to reimburse yourself for actual child care expenses. So if both spouses in, in a relationship are working or maybe you're just at a household or single or something like that and you have a kid, and your a company offers a dependent care benefit account, try and take advantage of that. You probably can't do it now. You'll probably have to wait until the fall when it's open season. The only exceptions I know to that would be if you had a child right now, like you had a birth, usually within a certain period of time after the birth of a child, you can enroll in dependent care benefits if it's outside of open season. So just a helpful hint, not really in the question here. All right. Um, Second to last question here, uh, Mike. Uh, this is from, um, we're going to call him uh, John. Okay, John. John says, I was divorced in 2019. The divorce was finalized and signed in November of that year. Prior to that, in 2018, I signed a legal financial agreement with my now ex-wife, uh, where we agreed on the financials, and as part of that agreement, I was to give her $2,500 a month in alimony. Can I deduct the alimony I pay her? Well, unfortunately, Steve, uh, this is another no. I mean, it's a no to every question today. I feel so negative. I want to answer yes to something. No, Steve, or sorry, John, you cannot deduct your alimony. Why? Well, again, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act to the rescue sarcastically to the rescue, um, divorces that were finalized, legalized after 2018, okay, or finalized before 2018 and then amended after, okay, such that they offer or afford alimony. The person, the spouse who's paying the alimony may not deduct the alimony, but conversely, the person who's receiving the alimony doesn't have to claim his income anymore. Woo! for them so um 2019 divorce finalized sorry john you're out of luck man no alimony deduction um but if like let's say this had been like one year earlier and you know uh the divorce would have been finalized the ink was dry on that divorce sliding on into 2019 he'd have been good to go unless of course 
he and his ex-wife went back to court, say in 2020, and renegotiated either lower or higher alimony. Don't amend that divorce decree. I mean, unless it's going to save you a lot of money if you're the one paying alimony, or I guess it's going to, you know, whatever. Um, so, yeah, no, sorry, John, no luck. Okay, uh, <clears throat> last question comes from uh, Frank. Uh, Frank, also a friend of mine. Um, Frank wants to know what I do with all the boxes uh, from my Lego sets and uh, what I do with all of the uh, manuals, the instruction manuals. Well, uh, the boxes go to recycling. Um, I kept them for a while and I don't know. I don't know why. I mean, I like the, some of the boxes are really nice. They have nice artwork on them and stuff like that, but I, I just toss them now. They go to the recycling center. Um, and, uh, the instruction manuals, I keep, them. um, I keep them not because I plan on really ever taking any of the sets apart, but as you saw with the T1 camper van a few weeks ago, if I drop them on the floor, I want to be able to grab the instruction manual. Um, although I guess with the T1, I left the instruction manual at the office and brought some pieces home, so I had to end up looking it up online. But anyway, I don't know. I have a binder. Um, you know, I'll show you. Give me one second. I'm back! Woohoo! Uh, I actually have a few of these, okay? The binder, and I get these little sheet protectors, and I just put the instruction manuals in the sheet protectors. Um, they're not really in any particular order, and there are kind of a lot of them. Um, there are like three or five binders that look like this. Um, I, one day, maybe if I get bored, I'll just take the things out and put them in numeric order based on the set number. So anyway, all right. Uh, that's it for Mailbag Friday. Thanks for watching. Um, have a great weekend. Don't forget to like, subscribe. It's free to subscribe. My mom was like, I go, why are you... What, do I have to pay for the subscription? Is it like the Hulu? No, it's not like the Hulu, man. The Hulu, God bless her. Anyway. Uh, no, you don't have to pay to subscribe. Just subscribe, okay? Um, and uh, and if you leave a comment, I read them. I respond. Um, so you have a question, always ask me in the comments below. Um, have a great weekend. Stay tuned again Monday. All things tax withholding. You do not want to miss it. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching.